I should say good evening to all. Actually, always the panel discussion immediately after lunch and then at the end of the any conclave is a very tricky one. You will hardly see people after lunch not interested to listen to and at the end of the session, people will be busy going for the home. Anyhow, we do have our panel members here. To make it simpler, what I will propose is that I would request each uh, dignitary on the dais to say uh, on the subject for five minutes each, and then whatever questions we have, we will exchange between us. So can we start with Mr. Can we start with you, Mr. Deepankar? Okay. Um, uh, the topic is very interesting, um, smart city and IoT. Uh, interesting in that sense is that uh, what is smart city is very vague, I should say. Uh, India had done lots of planning for smart city, but ultimately uh, what is coming out of smart city is not quote unquote smart. But if we just forget about that but part, if we focus on IoT, I will take this session more on how IoT is improving the normal people life. That way, if you can look into it, uh, there are ample use cases for IoT. And surprisingly, it requires a huge amount of sensors. And if I am not wrong, uh, the estimate says that by 2030, it will be a uh, 30 billion, uh, 30 trillion dollar business. And there will be huge amount of interconnected uh, devices. And from IoT, we are slowly moving towards everything on internet. So it's basically the things are continuously changing. Now, if we look at the use cases, what we can see, IoT can be utilized and is being utilized in lots of places uh, where, say, waste management. That's a very important aspect. So we can actually monitor, control, uh, and do a proper action so that wastes are properly managed. Uh, there are use cases in, say, uh, say uh, steel manufacturing companies where these IoTs are helping to understand where the fly ash is getting dumped. If it is beyond regulation, there will be immediate uh, red flag to the CMD's dashboard that these things are not managed. Similarly, everybody knows about the wearables. We all wear IoT. And frankly, uh, the previous two sessions on data security, I don't think we are so much bothered. All our data is in, uh, all my health data is in uh, cloud. And it can be traced back by anybody. Simple person can trace it back saying, what was your uh, blood pressure, how many steps you have taken throughout the day, what you have done, I can just map you immediately. So, there are, what I'm trying to say is the use cases of IoTs, there are very, very interesting use cases, but there are other set of story, which is the security story of the thing. It is, the IoT is giving us terabytes of data every day, uh, just to give one example, one flight of Boeing 747 uh, across Atlantic gives me, every flight gives me 20 GB of data. What I do with that data? How I store this? Where I keep this? How I secure this? All this actually makes the IoT ecosystem stronger. So I think today's discussion, we will hear uh, from the panel the use cases the security challenges and how we are managing it to make it better for uh, us, for the community. One more point I want to say is that because it is West Bengal and we are hearing about semiconductor, uh, global foundries, uh, which is bringing in GAN, gallium nitride semiconductor, that will do a huge amount of boost in the production of IoT sensors. My point is, we missed lots of buses in IT. Uh, Can we catch on to this bus and become probably the India's largest IoT sensor manufacturer? Because IoT sensors will be uh, 
required too many in the coming years. 75 billion sensors will require in a year. Not a matter of joke. And there is, the demand is so high, supply is not so strong. So how we can do that, that may also be discussed in this point. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to you. Can I request Mr. Kumar So, good evening. I am Umar Shankar. I am holding the charge of uh, IG registration. So, I will take from the point of land records, how they are uh, utilizing IoT in the land management. So, we can make better townships or better uh, smart cities from the citizens point of view. So, first of all, there are many examples, many countries, countries like Dubai, countries like Singapore or Australia, New Zealand and some of the European countries, they use complete GIS and GPS based mechanism for identification of the plots and identification of the plot boundaries as well as the valuation also. So that gives a very fair value to the government for taxation purpose as well as the fair value to the citizen also. So in most of the townships or wherever we go, the land either is owned by mostly by the government or the government organization or government is procuring from the private organization. So here there is always a tussle between the citizen and the government or there are a lot of malpractices in terms of undervaluation or in terms of uh, corruption in the valuation process. So here we expect a lot of IoT process, GPS, GIS or the drone setups so there is a lot of scope to incorporate into that and with that we can reduce the fraudulent activities of encroaching someone's land or selling someone's land to others. So these are the major issues we come across on day to day basis. So that is one major uh, area of uh, interest for the applying for applying the IoT also. And next one is land use monitoring. So there are instances where Suppose the government or uh, as a land department, we give land for a particular purpose, say for example, residential purpose. But unfortunately, in most of the places, especially in the urban areas, if it is more commercially viable, then people take commercial activities without getting the permission of the government or appropriate authority. So that causes the nuisance to the locality, first of all, and it causes the revenue loss to the state also. That that hampers the entire planning activity because government has made a certain planning activity. Suppose if you take the Newton as a uh, smart city, there are approved plan is there, LEDCP is there. So, but there are a lot of violations that we cannot monitor on a regular basis. Though the Newton is a smaller area, but there are many bigger cities, bigger small cities. So, for that monitoring, land use monitoring also, we can take the help of IoT. And another thing is countries like Brazil and all, they use IoT or devices or sensors for monitoring the environmental aspects like deforestation. The people are simply in many places, they cut the trees and they building, they start building construction. So that kind of purpose also because yeah, it's not possible from the government point of view to monitor each and every household, every plot, whether the tree cover is being maintained or not. So if we can use that kind of mechanism so that is also another area for environmental aspect also similarly the countries like japan and all they use whether the land use the, the proper planning whatever the plan happened it is being followed or not from the disaster management point of view suppose if there is a canal is there if the canal is encroached by someone else then it causes the flood if there is a approved construction limit if it is violated then it will cause the land submerge and it will it can cause some other disaster also. So these kind of aspects are very much required and this is the scope for the industry also to come up with ideas to suggest the government authorities. So then we can incorporate these kind of IoT mechanisms or devices or systems in the government process for making the smart cities really smart. It's not that simply government made the uh, plotting and gave it to the residential purpose, these purposes the houses are coming up. That smartness and this should be in every aspect from the starting from the land records to the controlling the disaster. That is what the expectation from as a government administrator we expect from the industry. We want to make this 
opportunity this platform to inform to the industry upon it that's it thank you mr robert you have views hello okay hi uh, good evening uh, this ma'am robert sharma i am representing dit government of manipur it department uh, from my side i would like to say that uh, don't notice the manipur uh, the state of manipur we are still uh, in the face of developing a digital ecosystem right now in sense like we are trying to first implement e governance system we are trying to build up all the applications which are still offline right now many of the departments are still not using it and many of the uh, the network system is still not very good we are still struggling to improve that so when we start uh, listening to the, our speakers here of implementing iot there still it is a long way to go for us yes nevertheless uh, we had been i have been listening from the morning all the use cases and the, all the struggles that we have been uh, people are facing in implementing iot we do also had started do uh, big certain proposal for implementing iot like uh, our department also take care of it as well as telecommunication so in the telecommunication sector we were pl planning to install iot devices on all the towers mobile towers which are there in the state in order to get a proper signal and to see what is the connectivity status because in the state like manipur as i said we are still struggling with the network connectivity and in the far flung area all the 4g is still a dream still again so and then power cut happens every now and then so it's very difficult for us to see which tower is up which tower is down and so we are trying to install iot device but there again there are a lot of regulation which is stopping us installing those device on each of the uh, towers again the cost is also huge so all this is there and uh, lastly we were also trying to install smart meters sir. smart electric meters whatever say is again uh, smart meters are still uh, not being properly implemented so one of the use cases that we were trying to do is to install again uh, iot devices on the smart meter so that it is properly uh, signals are properly sent back to the database and then we can control um, see what is the status of each of the meters so these are a few of the things which is the, that we are still in the proposal phase from it department as such for for the implementing smart city in the state so these are the few things that we are still having and we are still working on it thank you sir from your side if you can say five minutes of uh, and do i say something about the smart meter issues or anything beyond that IOT. 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 Okay, okay, okay. I get it. Uh, <clears throat> basically, in the power sector, IT, IoT infrastructure is a huge, huge uh, area, which uh, I think a lot of people are still very um, have very little idea about. And uh, this is one field which is changing extremely rapidly. Uh, all utilities, I don't know how many of you are aware, are already on the ERP many years back. So invariably, ERPs are usually uh, enterprise resource solutions which will put all the uh, activities of a particular utility together in one place, so that you don't waste money in terms of spending. So within that, your billing software, your customer management software, your uh, uh, outage solutions, all of these are all very much built in. This was the initial stage of automation which was done. The next level of automation which was done was actually to take it forward by installing IoT devices in our infrastructure. Now, transformer traditionally we would measure maybe uh, four or five parameters only. But with the IoTs which have come in, you can measure as many as around nearly 70 to 80 parameters and get it transmitted to your server also in some place so that you can do predictive maintenance also. Which transformer is going to go out is something which is very clear and much ahead. Which transformer is facing problems related to their uh, overload, underutilization, their uh, uh, other parameters related to the utility are all very clear right at the start. Power factor and so on and so forth. 
the iot's for example in the distribution sector are different from the iot's that we use in the generation sector now in the generation sector we have a lot of iot's at various parts of the plant in fact the usage of iot uh, is the maximum probably in the plant so that also collects a huge amount of data the other iot's that we commonly now see are your smart meters as someone is also mentioning now a smart meter also can give you maybe for every 15 minutes or every 5 minutes a huge amount of data on hundreds of parameters it's up to your ability and capability as to what you would do with the data and typically like for example up has maybe around close to uh, 4 to 5 crore connections west bengal has nearly 2 and 2 crore 10 15 lakh crore lack uh, connections bihar north has maybe around 2 crore or south has 1 crore so all these devices are producing a huge amount of data now over and above the uh, data which is coming through the mdms as we call it there is a head end system which collects the data which puts it into the mdms which is the meter data management system that processes the data over and above that you have an outage management solution you also have a CRM also, you also have uh, other analytics running on it. The third phase, which I think is the most promising, which is happening now in the power sector is the use of analytics. Now, analytics give you a uh, much more uh, response to data. Previously, we used to get a huge amount of data, you don't know what to do with it. The analytics now is coming, which helps you in trying to understand uh, based on exceptions, based on parameters in terms of ranges, what is right, what is wrong, and the along with that, the notification also is built into it. So this is giving you a huge amount of you know information for which you can respond immediately, and it's making life easier for a lot of people within the power sector. So I think this is the initial thing which I can probably say, but later on I can expand on it much more. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dipankar, you had mentioned that West Bengal can become a hub of IoT sensor, but can you say how it can become? What are the steps to be taken by the government of West Bengal to be an IoT sensor, in considering the given the thrust of semiconductor? Correct. Process? Correct. Uh, uh, see, I have to do a little bit of technical uh, discussion. I will try to be as laymanish as possible. But what happens, uh, see, till date, the semiconductor was silicon based. We, call it, we used to call it MOSFET. From that, with the GFs coming into the state, acquiring Tegotek, the semiconductor is moving towards GAN, gallium nitride. And gallium nitride is changing the way semiconductor is being developed. It will, it will obviously. It's, it's basically a complete new technology and it is breaking the all barriers which silicon had. And it has a fantastic advantage. Uh, in the semiconductor industry, we measured the effectiveness through band gap energy. Uh, silicon has 1.12, if I'm not wrong, I'm uh, telling from memory, uh, whereas uh, this one, GAN has 3.3, etc. So, what happens? This can withstand much higher temperature, much higher frequency and deviation of power. So this will be an ideal, ideal material for different IoT devices, batteries for two reasons. One, in the cases where you have power electronics, you need to have a high power semiconductor, which Silicon is not very, you know, up to the mark. And silicon is actually existing, uh, exhausting. So this will be now, if we have an ecosystem grown around GF's fab, even GF's uh, design lab, fabless, what you can do, we can create a set of startups or West Bengal is very rich in MSMEs. Bring those MSMEs into the cohort and provide them with the GF's semiconductor in much cheaper price or even at no cost because it will go back to GF. 
they can provide the iot sensors into chargers batteries uh, power electronics devices uh, meters smart meters totos evs all will now have you have to have those in next 3 4 years why don't we create those upfront bring the iot startups into the foray even we can set up a lab where new uh, startups can join to make different iots and that will then create a complete different ecosystem to make iot in the state instead of bringing them from china with low cost and believe me if that happens then the demand of iot devices sensors in next next 4 to 5 years will be as i was telling 75 billion to 100 billion it's not a matter of joke you will not have people to deliver those and with this rugged technology if we have this this will be a winner hence my belief is that if we act properly if we act with coherently with the gf to make the ecosystem downstream ecosystem stronger will have a fantastic iot ecosystem available in the state and will be obvious leader in that uh, manufacturing so that's my point thank thank you very much uh, it was shankar you had mentioned that uh, land and other areas where from that i can say everything connected to everything is happening now but how the governance can be applied to ensure for easy access with proper security yeah so for that mean of course in most of almost all of the state they we started uh, digital registration platforms the registration is being on the digitally even there is no manual intervention but still we want to improve with the help of artificial intelligence also for the land record registration and property registration that is a one thing and another thing is by complete integration with gis and gps platform that is the the best way the government can provide the information that property details and the valuation details to the citizen so that is the way we are still improve we are trying to incorporate there and we are hopeful with a click of just a photo of the property you will assess you can come up the coordinates of the plots also and you will get the valuation depending upon the its proximity to the uh, key loca key landmarks like metro station bus stand and hospital schools market so accordingly it will be calculated so then there is no discrepancy or disparity on the property valuation so this is the way the government wants to improve the citizens interface in term in dealing with the properties as well as the land easy access easy for access them. and uh, there is no need to moving here and there to getting it mutated or getting it converted so that is the way government is coming up with a lot of uh, new initiatives with the help of it and uh, it enabled uh, iot services and by that you also feel that the governance will become more yes, effective yes with that we can the system will be more simplified more transparent less complicated and human involvement yeah, will be yeah human involvement less regrets so that's why even the government of india is trying to amend the entire registration act so that deliberation has already started because this act is 1908 almost more than 125 years old 120 years old so there are lot of inconsistency to the current scenario of the land management or registration process so for that the entire act has to be overhauled so that process already has been initiated because being the it's a central act so the states cannot amend any provisions of the act other than the minor the duty structure or stamp structure okay. thank you uh, if i can if i can add one thing uh, as if you ask this uh, fantastic point and uh, sir has mentioned a very interesting point that uh, making the data available upfront at the fingertips what is happening there is a see iot is basically digital and physical convergence ideal digital thing so what is happening there is a open data system which is getting getting prepared so that people if they want to understand what is there with a the proper level of security obviously i am not uh, talking about the security with a 
proper anonymization can pick the data up and can actually tell that so citizen can do their own services along with that so if you want to tomorrow if you want to set up a plant you can actually get the data from the land revenue and can assess on your own instead of doing you know to you know today what happens uh, so instead yeah, of that that's, right. that's what the governance and assess. so that's what even for yeah. you know, for registering a small property you have to depend upon the deed writers or the lawyers for that you have to the citizen has to pay huge sum so that's why we we are incorporating model deeds also and if the property is free from all encumbrances encumbrances then the citizen will be very easy. very much Easy. Guaranteed yeah. to go ahead on his own. So these are the things facilitate the citizens. So Robert, you mentioned yeah. that you are in the process of building up the IT, this IoT in the world. So what are the security, data security, and other systems you are planning to implement? Uh, sir, we have to still uh, work on that because still. Uh, to be very honest, uh, in our street, like uh, as we are, I told you earlier, data, uh, all the, the departments, whoever is implementing any uh, web solution or any portal, the data are stored elsewhere in different, different uh, things. So as you said, how to implement data security there in order to have all this data, we have to first compile all this data on a common platform, bring on a common user, then only we'll be able to apply all those data securities and other things. So, at this point of time, we we although although we already have a proper data data center there, and we are already implemented various policies there to uh, build all the uh, portals and website onto our data center, and then we already implemented various security policy. Also, we already in the process of implementing our own state policy, which is not yet approved yet. But then still, our process first is to bring all the data all the uh, portal and other things onto our platform. Then only we'll be able to completely implement all the data security policies and other things, sir. So we're still in the process right now. Okay, thank you. Sir, uh, you had mentioned that uh, about the, on the usage of IoT in generation and distribution. Can you briefly tell us that what was the measurable benefit you got from the IoT on generation and distribution. Okay, in the distribution sector, uh, smart meter mm -hmm. has multiple uses. In fact, uh, <clears throat> one, it removes the requirement of meter reading. Now, there are pros and cons why you should have a meter reader. Uh, maybe a meter reader assists in terms of you know having some contact with your consumer. But now, <coughs> but nowadays, what we have found is that. Most of the time, meter reader doesn't go. He picks up the reading, previous reading, and you know, stretches it for two, two months or three months or whatever, and comes back and tells us that, okay, I have not found the consumer. He has not put the meter out uh, for me to read. So we do what is known as average billing. So that is one area where we can completely uh, remove the meter reader. Of course, meter readers have their own uses. They will always be deployed elsewhere. That is not the issue. But this is a major problem that uh, smart meters will definitely remove, number one. Number two, a citizen also can understand what his consumption pattern is. Currently, what's happening is the system the citizen has absolutely no idea why he has a bill suddenly which was a huge spike in uh, uh, in, in the consumption. Now, he, there is a there's an app, for example, even CAC has the app. Every day you can check what exactly is your consumption. There is a way, in fact, you can fix the time of day consumption patterns and also change your uh, required uh, tariff also. That is also feasible. Then, you know, the third thing is that I can, for example, from my control center, can also shut down the smart meter as well as the connect, cut the connection. If someone is not paying, for example, maybe is not paid for one month, two months, etc., there is a system of CRM which works and informs the person by messages, etc., that you have not paid your bill. That is the same thing which happens with our mobile also currently. You get half a dozen messages one by one, then probably you will get a telephone call also saying you have not paid your bill, so on and so forth. Now, all these are all done on an uh, automatic manner. You don't need a person to tell someone. 
So automatically these calls go, automatically messages go, and if the person is not responding, then you can cut the connection. That is one important thing. Second, if he immediately gets back and tells you that uh, I paid, etc., etc., I paid the fine also, you can immediately reconnect also. It it is that much more instantaneous. So imagine if somewhere in very remote areas you have a meter, and for that you again have to tell the local sub, uh, station superintendent or someone to say please go and reconnect it. That's a exercise in itself. So that at least is eliminated. Apart from that, there are another thousand reasons why we can have a smart meter. Ha! Huh. You can always say, what's the necessity of having a smart meter? It is actually a computer. It's actually a computer in every sense. It has a chip, but it does most of the functions of a computer. Costs around four, five thousand rupees or even slightly more also depending on how many you buy at a time. So do you need it for anyone who's maybe consuming 25 units a month? That's a different issue altogether. But definitely there is a huge uh, uh, benefit of using a smart meter. Similarly, in fact, in our own uh, generation or even within our transmission also, most of our metering is now automatic. There is no point nowadays because actually what has happened is the more physical touch points you have, the more is the source of corruption and mismanagement. So, in the current world, everyone is trying to avoid as many physical touch points as possible. Which is why they are automating it through IoT devices, whether it's in generation, whether it is in our solar also, whether it is here. So everywhere we have what is known as SCADA devices which control, okay, you want to bring down something, you bring it down. So the SCADA will definitely give a command and it will chat something. So that's how things work. We get the data also automatically through SCADA. Since being a, in power listening, you must be having your own data acquisition system earlier. So with the new IoT, how did you make it effectively uh, manage to implement? No, it is it is a very straightforward thing. IoT is not a very difficult uh, this saying itself. What I, what is supposed to be done is the integration part. So integration initially takes a little bit of difficult the difficulty because that API uh, has to be generated and that API has to be consumed by us. So there are problems where uh, maybe. The API for whatever reason is not working or something like that. We have to sit down and do a little bit of a battle and find out a solution for that. The, the programmable interface which is provided by the API is basically a very small set of data in a table. So that we can consume it and immediately respond to it. And that's transmitted wirelessly. So we don't have to depend on it. It can be transmitted on 3G, 4G, 5G, whichever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, since you are advisor to uh, Webel now, can you say that how can uh, government can boost the smart city infrastructure, giving startup ecosystem to play? Interesting question. I will, uh, as I started off, also I will stay a little bit away from the smart city term. I will more focus on what citizen benefit we can get by IoT. See, if you really, really, if we think a little bit differently, by 2050, almost two-third of our population will live in cities. Think about that. It's not a matter of joke. If they're living in cities, the city's land area is not increasing. So we are having more of vertical instead of horizontal. I mean, the land pattern is cannot be changed, frankly. Huh? Now what we have to do? The place where you had only five people's livelihood to be maintained, sewerage, parking, uh, market, there you are now maintaining 5,000 people. So how you can do this? Technology is the only way you can manage this. There is no other option. And that should be done through a very minute planning on IoT with a proper policy of IoT implementation. You should have a very clear understanding that if it is in West, so we talk, we talk about West segregation. I don't know, uh, West to wealth is one of the major point and West segregation is really troublesome. In, in West Bengal, in India, 
versus is not segregated hmm? can we do an iot based analysis and do that automatically if somebody puts an waste wet waste into dry it will uh, tell that moisture content is more than this can you cannot then it will go to the municipality automatically the ulb i should say ulb automatically that this is the amount of waste in this area which is not getting cleared by xyz so the truck should move automatically they should be automatic centers similarly i am talking about the comfort of the people hmm? similarly the transport should be continuously monitored managed and overseen through an unmanned control center through iot you can do that every i mean um, sir can say every pole has an iot um, the electrical poles and you can get all the data from that why don't we have that in all the signal poles so it what i'm trying to say is that in your every day to day life from your waste management to your transportation we should have a proper smartness through the government and i i am i always say that government cannot do everything the citizens and the startups and the private company should come hand in hand and create a full ecosystem of giving comfort to the citizens through iot that will make the things smart i mean uh, if we if we really see that our uh, average age of uh, is increasing so uh, in india now the uh, people are having average 79 to 80 which was 65 few years back slowly you will have the city of old and we already have some in west bengal in kolkata also you know that how to give them comfort only through proper technology implementation through managing the uh, old people's regular activities um, clearly connecting them with the hospitals through iot's through different grids so that you can even you can use the power channels to make that happen there are lots of but you need a proper policy so policy and technology should go hand in hand uh, normally what happens technology advances policy goes behind in this case if we can do a little bit more uh, comprehension then probably we can give a better life to the people in future that's all my point thank you uh, so i think uh, we have heard from all the panelists i will like to end it by requesting our panelists each one to say their concluding remarks on the subject you sir to start with uh, <clears throat> uh i think currently uh, the technology available in terms of uh, iot devices coupled with ai ml and other uh, uh, analytics and you know in different areas has a lot of potential in improving the life of the citizens uh it's also important that people who are in the production uh, facilities also also are given a little bit of a much uh, less trouble in terms of management because if maintenance is a headache production is a headache then you know the it stresses the whole organization also uh to that extent the automation through iot devices in fact makes a huge 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 benefit to them uh citizens are also nowadays using iot in fact i've seen quite a few citizens have cameras at home which uh, monitor movement that's the least that they do so that in case someone is entering unauthorizedly into the house also the movement is picked up and immediately a notification is given that some movement has happened you also even get a little bit of a clip also which shows who is moved or you know someone has paid come in front of the camera so these are certain things which help a lot of people and i think people are also uh, more and more uh, uh, adopting these technologies to improve their own lives also i think uh, in the coming future probably I, we should see uh, a much greater penetration of iot devices into the public life as well as into other areas also thank you uh, can i ask uh, so mashankar as ready sir rightly pointed out it should be at the end of the day it should be convenient and hassle free and beneficial to the citizen 
it's not should it's not be like that okay for creating the ecosystem you should not feed so much of iot devices and at the end of the day it should not be a white elephant it should not be a ivory tower where we cannot manage at the end of the day so whatever uh, we are incorporating we are putting into action it should be uh, applicable and usable and it should be sustainable from the government point of view as well as the cost effective point that's what my okay point right. mr robert yes. so i mean our uh, steam balance is already set but one thing that i would like to mention here is although the government makes a lot of efforts to implement smart city then make the life of people easier by implementing emerging technology but from the people side they hope to be more smarter you know using these devices if we implement make rules and people still don't follow the rules like in manipur we we implement lot of unified portal and uh, uh, give the opportunity to the people to apply online to make their life easier but still they uh, they still like to go to uh, the commissioner's office stand in a line and apply for the thing online or offline i mean so we will have to smartly use the thing then only all this uh you know effort that we are putting in to use uh, to make the life of the people e much uh, easier will not still be effective so we smart city people need to be smart smarter that's what the like my comment fit when they conclude it i i have uh, two different view points on this first is yes iot devices will provide huge amount of data and if we can basically merge it with a proper uh, analytics and machine learning i am staying away from the term artificial intelligence because human intelligence is not yet exhausted if we can bring that analysis into the life then we can probably do a much more better preventive approach towards the things which we are doing and give up better comfort but i have the uh, let me see the other side of the story Uh, as George was saying, I mean, it's not really people are not smart. It's probably we are not making them educated enough. How we can make that? Can we utilize technology to make? Just to just to give you an uh, simile, if we want to educate all our children in a normal brick and mortar school, we'll need number of schools which will fill in the whole Bay of Bengal. think about that and then you can understand it is an impossible task so we need to have technology to make them educated and third it is very important to make citizen aware even us i am not talking about those who are going offline to write of data do i know what is my right of data the data which is created by this watch do i know where it is getting stored can i bring that back if i require no so it is a both way short it is really very comfortable stay in few years but if i am not managing it properly the data the security the awareness the education i will probably be in more dangerous place so it's both the story if we can manage properly we will have a real real smart there has to be a balance thank you very much thank you uh, on behalf of all the panelists and myself i thank webel for inviting us to be a part of this panel discussion thank you very much